Good afternoon everybody, uh, it's live, we're live, <laughs> I have no idea what I was thinking of saying then, totally lost my train of thought. Um, see, every time, every time I try and do a live, my phone starts pinging and I can't even turn that one off because it's on the other side of the room, so please bear with me, I am sorry if that does start pinging all the way through. Um, I will try and do something, I'm not sure what, but I'll try and do something. Um, firstly, thank you all for joining me this afternoon uh, for this little catch up, little Facebook Live. We're going to be playing with a few of the die sets from the Perfect Day collection. Um, but really, it's just a little chat, it's just a little catch up. It's time for you guys. If you've got any burning questions uh, you'd like to ask, then by all means, type them up in the comments and we'll see if we can get through as many as we can. Lavinia's watching. Hi Lavinia, thank you for joining us. So let me know, um, A, you can see everything all right, B, you can hear me all right. Um, what is your afternoon tipple today? Today I've got a glass of water because it's quite warm out there again today. Ian's here. Hi Ian, thank you for joining us. So yeah, it's just it's just one of those little crafty little get-togethers. We'll do a little bit of card making. I'll share a few tips and tricks as we go through and um, you could probably persuade me um, maybe to spill some secrets on the next collection. Who knows? <laughs> it depends. It depends on how this Facebook Live goes. Um, yeah, by, by all means, just ask away. Um, type up your questions if you want to know anything. By all means, uh, this is for you. This is for you guys. So let me know. Uh, Tanya's here too. Hi, Tanya. Uh, let me know what you've been up to. I hope you've all been keeping safe and well. Um, Catherine got my USB today, looking forward to using it. Oh, fabulous! It's great to see that the USBs are already landing on doorsteps. I cannot wait to see what you guys are making with that. So that was a really fun, it's been a really packed week actually, really, really full on um, with many shows. I can't remember how many shows, I'm terrible, aren't I? Um, what's that level? I just missed that one. Lindsay's here, hi Lindsay. Jessica's here too. So yeah, yeah, a little uh, action pack week. Do you know what? I actually totally forgot it was Thursday today. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what day I thought it was. Um, but yeah, I kind of just, like I was so late with everything today. Like, you know, all the little posts that we put up and getting this prepped. I suddenly thought, oh, goodness me, you know, I've got to do, got to do a Facebook Live. Valerie's here. Hi, Valerie. Christine's here as well. Hi. Oh, it's lovely to have your company, guys. So really, really fabulous. So I haven't, I'm sorry, I haven't even prepped um, like a sample card to show you guys. I've just literally cut some of the pieces ready to go. Um, but what I wanted to touch on as well were the vignettes, because we often get questions about the um, vignettes. Um, so I thought it might be a good opportunity to just go over how we get those, where we can download those from, how we use them, and how they work with the dies as well. I've got a few questions coming in. Let me just scroll back and see. Couldn't get the USB. Oh, I have to wait to scan it up first. Yeah, well, the USB will work on any electrotting, electrotting, that's not a thing, electronic cutting machine. Um, that will read an SVG file, um, but with obviously the scanning function of the, the scan and cut, you can utilize then the vignettes as well. So it is, it is obviously a considered investment, but if it's something you're looking to add to your collection, it is something I just wholeheartedly recommend. It's such a fab machine, any one of them, any one from the CM or the SDX range, depending on what you're gonna utilize the machine for, uh, really does transform your crafting. Really, really fun bit of kit. Uh, Tanya got the shabby rectangles today. Yeah, that's that's something. It's one of those um, kind of workhorse little die sets, the nested die sets. So we do two versions. We do um, the primaries, which are like your, your base shapes, and the pretty shabbies, and they've got like a little torn edge, which are really cute. Um, perfect for stamped images. Yeah, great for stamped sentiments and things like that. Angela's here. Tracy's here. Hi, guys. Okay, so vignettes. So you can go onto our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk. If you click on downloads, you then have options. So downloads is along the top of the page and it will come up with uh, free downloads. It will come up with additional downloads. There's now obviously the um, SVG sort of friendly ones for the USB as well. Um, Jessica's Nan's USB counter, she can't wait to get playing too. Anna's here from Norway as well. Hi Anna. Um, 
So yeah, you've got options in there. So we've kind of split the categories down. So hopefully it's a little bit um, easier for you guys to navigate. Once you select whichever version you're using, you can then filter the um, free downloads or the additional downloads by the collection along the side of the page. So if you're looking for Perfect Day, for example, you just hit Perfect Day. If you're looking for something that you have a specific die for, you type in the die name. So there's a little search button there as well. Janine's here, she's going to be crafting along with us. Pam's here as well. Ah, oh, Samel's here from Florida. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, guys. So yeah, you've got, you've got options there to search your vignettes. Now, within the vignette files, depending on the age of the collection, you've got either your standard vignettes, which, as we know, you can cut out with your dies, and we do have our mirrored vignettes. So they come with a mirrored image of one another. So you've got the black line, down the centre of the design. And what that means is you can cut onto the line, fold them in half, cut the dies, uh, cut, use the dies to cut the uh, vignettes as you would normally with a standard vignette, but it means you get the back image to your die cut is beautifully coloured and not white anymore, um, and just as lovely as the top. So I will show that in a full demo as we go through the Perfect Day card as well. Um, a couple of little tips when it comes to, to vignettes. We do recommend Pro Paper. So that's um, a paper from Car um, Create and Craft where you can print it off. It has a, like a matte surface. So it doesn't hold too much ink. It really does, it's a great saving device on your ink consumption. But it also has these like amazing magical properties. I really don't know the science of it, which ensures that it gives you a true likeness to the color of the vignette. What I'd also recommend when you're printing out Whichever program you're using, ensure you are printing at either actual size or 100%. The wording does vary depending on what system you are using. For me personally, I um, use PDF readers, so I use um, Adobe Reader. Um, oh, what have we got? Any, any tips? Really appreciated. Just seen the samples of the new collection. I know. Yeah, there's a few more little sneaky peeks going on um, in the next next few hours and so. So when you, when you print out, select actual size or 100%, again, wording does vary depending on, on what system you're using, and you want to be pretty, printing sorry, on high, your highest quality settings. And that then results in all of this beautiful, glorious detail, all of the shade, all of the light, all of that really pretty artwork that brings those die cuts to life. So I thought we could dive on in. I will keep obviously answering questions as we go, so just keep keep typing up. Um, am I gonna start, show how to resize the vignettes? I will absolutely show how to resize the vignettes for the scan and cut. I'm not gonna do it on today's demo. Um, a, we don't. I don't have enough time today, unfortunately, um, and I would need to set up the scan and cut to do that. <laughs> if you saw what is around me at the moment, I'm literally working in a space this big with collections going off and demos going off and testing going off. So yeah, forgive me, it's not gonna be today, but we will absolutely do that and we will advertise that in advance. Joe's here as well, as well as Helena. Hi guys. Right, so let me um, press that button to flip the camera around like so and we are down on to my desk so we're still obviously practicing all the, the safe social distancing the team the office team are still working um from home so again it's not the usual setup so do bear with me it's not my usual working area um but we're going to be making our perfect day card shape with a few of the corsages so do let me know if you are crafting along with me first up we want to cut our outer layers of the Perfect Day card shape. So it's it's like an A5 sort of size, but you've got obviously the frames, you've got the mats and layers, you've got the apertures, you've got detailing, you've got your little die to the centre, which adds in the sort of a tuck-in effect if you're great for sort of invites and things like that. So you've got options there. To cut the card blank, you can cut it in a number of ways. So you can take this outer die, the largest outer die, you would lay it over your cardstock and simply cut it twice. Oh, I'm really struggling with my words today. Please forgive me, people. Um, cut it twice, so that gives you the front cover and the back cover of your card blank. That is what we've done with this particular design. 
what you can also do is take a piece of folded card and I'll just do one quickly off camera just a little folded card okay like so this you can then cut in one go by hanging the die over the edge so if you've got a folded piece of card you hang one side depending on whether you want it like a top fold or whether you want it a side folding card you'd hang that die over the edge of the card and run that through your die cutting machine that will mean it will cut all of the areas sitting on the card and then leave the spine of the card free so it has that fold on there what i recommend if you're doing it that way then still cut another layer out of this die set because what you can then do is lay it over the top of your card so you then get the scalloped edge down the side of the fold as well it just hides the mechanics of the card if you like oh goodness me here we go <laughs> oh fingers and thumbs again here we go uh darlene's here hi darlene and fiona has joined us as well so thank you guys for joining us today so that's how to create a card blank now obviously what we can do this time around is I've cut it in two separate versions so the front cover and the back cover we then need to create a score so we've scored an inch down from one side of the edge of the card this will be the back cover this will be the front cover we then stick them together so a little uh, newsreader shuffle just to get those cards lined up and you can feel them kind of slot in because you've got that same shape either side just hold it on one side with your hand and peel back that folded edge, that scored edge, okay? Like so. We're using a little bit of red liner tape just on the inside of that score to stick our card blank together. We're using red liner tape because it's a lot stronger than the other tape, sort of finger lift tape or anything like that. So it means when we push it down, we then have... A lovely card blank you can hide the score on the back and it will stand up okay so it means you've got a lovely flat surface to work to the front and all your mechanics are hidden to the back of the card there as well okay a couple of queries there love this set Hannah yeah Valerie I love this set as well it's really subtle isn't it Chris thank you that's really sweet oh that's lovely thanks guys Wendy's USB came today as well, that's fabulous. Um, I'm going to really enjoy looking through all of your designs that you've been making with them. Now, what's really lovely about um, the majority of the dies from Carnation Crafts is it's really up to you how you want to use them. This would look great as a portrait card, but it looks just as good as a landscape card as well. So depending on where you want to put your score, you can make it a tent fold, you can make it a top fold, you can make it a side fold, it really is up to you. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're gonna make it into a tent fold, so we're gonna be working on it landscape, and we're gonna be introducing our mats and layers. So again, as you've come to know with Carnation Crafts, there's lots and lots of elements within each die set. So we work down into the next smallest layer, this has been cut from uh, Perfect Papers, uh, Perfect Day Perfect Papers, and you'll notice as we go through, I'm using foam. So I'm using one mil foam tape, just to tape these together. It gives a really luxurious feel to your card. It gives you a little bit of height, a little bit of dimension without adding too much bulk. So you see you've got a lovely little drop shadow going on but it's still postable. You're still gonna be able to pop this through uh, the postal system, through the letterbox, um, and it's gonna give you that really, really nice quality to it. Next up, we're gonna take the filigree. Now, I wanted to just slip back in to show you the perfect day card shape, because the frame, which is what we've cut this white layer from, has all of this gorgeous uh, filigree, all of this open work detail. What's really great about it is you've again got options. So the mats and layers inside it will cut an aperture. So if you want to turn this into a frame, you would select your uh, filigree layer and then you can select whichever frame you want really, depending on how thick you want the frame, but usually this inner layer here. This will then cut this out into a frame rather than having it as a full cut like we have on 
our one we're using today. Again, it gives you options because you haven't got that die edge on the inside of the frame. It gives you options to use it in different ways. So for me, for this card, we've cut it without an inside cut line. So we've just got that lovely filigree design and it's just cut from white. So this is, I'm just trying to think which thickness is, I think it's 250 perfect smooth on this one. So really nice bright white. Again, on the foam. So again, one mil foam. You'll notice what we do is we peel back the little tails of the foam like so, and then we put a little piece of foam in the middle. Don't ever worry about trying to stick the middle one down. The edges are absolutely more than sufficient to use in a card blank. The reason we put a little bit of foam in the middle the same size as what we're using on the outer edge is it just stabilizes the middle as well so you don't get any sort of sag in the middle of your card it will just bolster it a little bit as well so our filigree goes next so really again lovely tiny little um mats and layers to these gives a really beautiful elegant edge just trying to line that up it's difficult doing it without standing over it but and you now, so you see the tails that we've got going on with the foam tape there, we can peel. So it allows us to line up that layer perfectly and then quickly and easily peel away, give it just a final little rub over and that will give you a really nice, neat finish. It allows you to line everything up perfectly each and every time. Humberta's here as well. Hi Humberta, thank you for joining us. So you can see how this card's beginning to build. Using those foam layers, even though it's just a little bit, just gives you that extra added edge. Rather than having everything really flat on a card, do consider adding in more height and dimension with foam. Darlene, does the Carnation Crafts Perfect Smooth print well with a printer? Yes, I mean, it depends on your printer at home. Um, but yes, I do occasionally print out my vignettes on it if I want something a little bit more subtle rather than the bright colours of a pro paper. Um, but it does depend on what um, thickness of paper your printer will take. So it's worth just checking either on your online manual for your printer or your paper manual on that as well. Next layer. We're going to go in with this lovely kind of scalloped edge again in the blue. So it's really soft, um, almost like a duck egg blue from the Perfect Papers. Again, with the foam, top and bottom, and a little bit of foam to the centre just to stabilise the centre as well. So I've got my tails on. And it's super easy to line up because you've got these kind of little areas here that just nestle into the frame itself. So just hold that down. Hold it gently in place and peel the tail. So that tail's just ripped. So we can go back in afterwards and just adjust. So we get one side stuck down. And we can just gently peel back the card where that, that tail ripped through. And then peel away like so. Okay, Jennifer's here as well. Lovely. So that's, that's how we build those layers. Next up, I was looking for the next bit. We want to start adding in a few little details. Now, I'm going to give you a little sneaky peek. I have noticed some of my colleagues have logged on to watch as well. So you'll have to be really quick with this because I do get in trouble for giving away all the details. But this little stamp, um, one of the great ways that you can build in colour and texture in the designs is think about including stamped sentiments in a matching colour to your accent colour for your card. So this time around, we've taken our stamp sentiment which says, on your special day. And that special day could be anything. It could be an anniversary, it could be a wedding, it could be a birthday, it could be a christening, it could be absolutely anything in this beautiful script-like font. And we've stamped it. I think I used possibly memento ink on that one, but I just found a colour that matched lovely with the perfect papers there. And it just brings in this feeling of colour coordination throughout your design. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to curl the edge. So I'm going to take one of my pokey tools and just start running it along the paper, okay, or the card. Now I'm using my finger, so I'm holding the pokey tool like that behind the card. Okay. 
Nana says if you peel just two adjacent opposite corners and you have to worry about sticking two corners to line up. Yeah, I mean, it really, it's, for me, I just kind of go around in a clockwise and peel away. But yeah, you're quite right. If you peel two adjacent um, edges like we did on the blue, you only have to line up this edge, which doesn't have the sticky uh, uncovered. Then you can stick it down and peel away. So yeah, you'll find your own way of doing these, these little tips and tricks, whatever works for you. So we're just going to turn, you can see how that paper is starting to curl and hold that curl as well. You just want to encourage that around. So we're going to just work across this side as well. Just stroking the pokey tool across to really bring that curl to life. As we get to the edge, as the paper starts and the fibres in the paper starts to break down, you can start really just twisting your wrist around and twisting the end of that paper even more to pull that through. And it creates this lovely sort of um, scroll effect to the card itself. Same with the other side, I'm kind of doing it back to front on camera so it's, it's slightly difficult. You see how you can now roll that paper along and create this lovely soft curve effect. Sue, I've only just got into Carnation Crafts, but so beautiful. Ah, it's lovely to have your company, Sue. Um, we, I mean, we've been going, it's coming up to a year now, which is quite exciting. Um, but we have to say a big thank you to all you guys because you've been so supportive and so generous with your feedback and comments and things like that. So do keep them coming. We love to hear from you and we especially love to see all of the gorgeous creations you've been making with your projects on the crafters group as well. So just find a little flourish, just easing that card round to create a lovely full curve to the design. And we're going to stick that in place with our foam again. So two sides. It tends to be whichever one I get to first to grab and peel. And then just making sure that's even like so and you notice this time around we've only got the foam obviously on the side that's going to stick to the cardstock the other side where the curl is and everything we're leaving that free so we can then just stick where we need to but it gives us this ability to add in more detailing so now is this a new collection no it's not a new collection this is well i mean it's relatively new this is perfect day that launched i'm going to say the 3rd of March, so the beginning of, 3rd of March, 3rd of May, so the beginning of this month. So we're going to pop that to one side for the minute and we're going to have a look at the vignettes. So we're going to bring back in that print off that I showed you earlier. So this is the mirrored vignette version for the uh, corsage from the Perfect Day collection. And what's really key is this black line is down the centre of the designs. It's not down, not necessarily down the centre of the paper. The easiest way we found to uh, fold the page so it gets really crisp, clean fold line is take a pair of scissors and just snip into that line and make sure you've got your scissors aligned to snip onto that line, okay? Turn the paper around and we're gonna snip onto that line again from the other direction. All will become clear. <laughs> Those snips kind of force the paper to begin folding along that black line. So if you pinch at the ends of where you've snipped to, it will begin your fold for you, okay? So it's just really quick and easy way of getting a fold centrally along that black line. So you just squeeze along, all the way along. Once you've got it in place, you can then just give a little bit of finesse to that fold, like so. So you've got the fold exactly on that black line. Now, just for the purposes of demonstration, I'm just gonna print, um, print I'm gonna cut this one corsage, which is the one we're using in the design. But obviously, if you were working on this at home, great time saving device do get all your dies out line them all up over the top and cut away so let me just grab our die set now you'll see that doesn't fit <laughs> the reason i wanted to show you that was it is 
the mirrored side okay so if you just simply flip the paper around take your die again and lie that over the top now it fits perfectly so just take a little bit of time when you're um, lining things up make sure you've got them on the right side it will be really obvious if it doesn't line up and you'll notice all the way around you've got what we call uh, a little bit of bleed line now that's almost like a professional printing uh, device it means you can get the die lined up perfectly because you have the same space of the bleed all the way around but it also means when we come to cut it's going to give you an edge to edge cut with no white bits at all so I'm going to use uh, repositional tape my personal preference is um, scotch tape um, it just ensures when we are cutting the die set we're cutting the die out it's not going to shift around and it's not going to cut in the wrong place so two little bits should be absolutely fine for that I'm going to grab my cutting plates so you'll see I've not used any glue when it comes to use the using the mirrored vignettes and that's because I'm working on 128 pro paper because that pro paper is matte it will when it goes through the machine the pressure of the machine will force it together okay so what that means is it will squish it together and it shouldn't really come apart if you're finding for whatever reason that your your die cuts are coming apart either use a little bit of white glue after you've cut or you can use spray adhesive before what's really really key is do that fold first i know that from experience <laughs> if you try and fold after you use spray adhesive it literally you just get it everywhere you don't get the fold in the right place so fold first a little bit of spray adhesive if you're using anything other than pro paper and then we just use the same sandwich that we use in any of our machines so any of our machines for our um cutting dies little bit of um cut tidy on the top well loved piece of cut tidy i should probably say just going to squish the camera out of the way for a second so i can pop my plates into my machine and through they go let's just have a quick scroll back through the comments as well uh let's see what we got yeah the flowers are gorgeous in this collection aren't they fiona really pretty subtle soft colors paul has ordered the scotch tape yep great uh Yvonne should be having her USB delivery between one and three. Oh, that's exciting as well, isn't it? I do. Do you know what? I really love getting my notification from Create and Craft to say my delivery's on the way because it's like a little treat, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so that's cut through. Let's just peel away the cut tidy. And you see how these mirrored vignettes really come into play. It means if I just peel away the scotch tape there and there or oh, gently because i don't want to waste the vignettes i want to use those for another project at another time uh you'll get a couple of uses out of that repositionable tape as well now normally if we're cutting dies and we're cutting with, with a standard um vignette or charisma or whatever it is you're using you're used to seeing this side either in a plain color if you're cutting them from color card or in white Donna's asking, what is the purpose of Cut Tidy? So Cut Tidy acts basically in a couple of ways. It acts as like another shim. So it gives that extra little bit of pressure as the machine takes through the die. It kind of forces the paper and the die together. So it gives you a much cleaner, much crisper finish. And also if you use it as a pocket, um, as the name would suggest, it will catch all of the little bits that come out of your die as well. Um, whenever I'm using detailed dies like these, whenever I'm using filigree dies, um, pretty much whenever I'm cutting anything actually, I will use Cut Tidy. I just find it gives a much, much crisper, cleaner finish to my die cuts. So that's our little corsage that's been cut. All of that cut line detail is just glorious. So if you did want to cut this from white card and then colour it yourself, you've got plenty of lines there showing you where to colour, what to do, where the demarcation lines for the different flowers are. But because we're using that mirrored vignette, if I turn that around, you've then got colour on the back as well. So that's great. If you're looking for a more professional finish, if you're looking for cards where you want to have something over the edge or something through an aperture or perhaps on acetate, for example, that can be viewed from the inside of the card, it's going to look just as nice from the front. Also great if you want to use it for mirrored uh, designs, which... Um, I was looking if I've got it. No, I think I've, that's gone off to the studio. But 
I might show you some sneaky peeks in a bit. Stay tuned. So at this stage, I mean, you could absolutely just go ahead and use this um, little die cut as is, but the die cut lines are there to give you shape and texture. So again, take your pokey tool or your ball tool and just curl those edges. Think about whether you want them curling outward, perhaps you want some curling inwards. Give them a little bit of shape. Because you've got those cut line details, it will hold the form that you're giving it. So just gently roll the paper across the pokey tool, tweak up the edges, give a little bit of fun dimension there, like so. Now you can absolutely use a ball tool on these as well, but the end of a pokey tool works great too. So little round motions on those flowers, giving them height, and you see how those, those cut lines are just holding all of that detail in as well. So you've gone from something that was flat to something that has a lot more dimension, a lot more finesse in the finisher well and a lot more interest. And because you're using mirrored vignettes, when you view it from the side or you're looking at these little bits that sort of tweak back, for example, they're coloured on the reverse so they look just as beautiful as the front. Now for mine, I've already started decoupaging them up. So we've got the decoupage layers even on these. These need a little bit more finesse. These need a little bit more tweaking, a little bit more curving round. But it's quite a nice therapeutic way to spend an afternoon. It's a great thing to do if you've got the time, if you're looking for something just to occupy an afternoon. Um, do a load of die cutting, cut a load of dies, have them ready, made up, ready to go in your stash for those cards where, you know, perhaps, oops, we've forgotten someone's birthday and we need to make a quick card in a hurry. It's a great way to spend your time. How long does the glue last in the syringe if you don't use it in between cards? Do you know what? I've never tested it because I'm using it all the time. <laughs> it's the honest answer to that, Paul. But I will show you a quick trick. Okay, so the syringes, uh, this is 3D uh, pin flare glue gel. Um, again, it's personal preference. You can use foam pads when you come to decoupage layers. Um, but I do like the glue gel because you can get different height, you can get different dimension to it. Now, whenever you finish using it, let me just, just eke this out. I've just used this so it should be, no, it is stuck. Good to go. See, I say this, but I never follow my own advice, look. Let's get the gunk out of the end for you and then I can show you how you're meant to store your syringe of your glue. Right, so that's the little bit on the end. Okay, so whenever you're finished with your syringe, the temptation is to just go boop and pop it away. Don't do that only because air is still going to get into this little nozzle here, okay? And if you've done what I usually do and not squidge the glue out at the end, the glue will dry hard in this little um, tip to your syringe. Whenever you want to store it, just squidge out a little tip to the glue. Can you see that? I don't know if I can get that even better on camera. A little tip to the glue, all right. Then gently place your cap over the top. You don't want to get the glue in the cap what you're doing is creating almost like a little seal. So the next time you come to use it, it will be the little top bit that is hard, that has dried in, in the air, but you can grab hold of it with your tweezers or your fingers, pull it away, then your glue is good to go. Does that make any sense? I hope, I hope it does. Um, if you just pop the cap on like that, Obviously, then it's just this bit that's going hard. So it's, you've seen me trying to dig it out with a pokey tool and things like that. It's a little bit more of a struggle. So best practice is a little bit to the top and then pop the cap on. Okay, you will probably, you will need to dig a little bit out, but it just makes it easier. It gives you a little grip to the top that you can then remove the, the glue, the hard glue with. Um... So yeah, a couple of people who do it with the tubes never thought to do it with the syringe. Yeah, it's exactly the same principle with the syringe there as well. And that, do you know what? That's what's lovely about these Facebook Lives is because you can have um, a little chat, a little two-way conversation. Thank you, but I'm really glad that makes sense because sometimes I do say stuff and I think, do you know what? I have no idea if that makes any sense or not. <laughs> okay, so we've got our corsages ready to go. So again, 
Think about how you want the decoupage layers to be. You can absolutely pop those on with foam pads if you want or pop them on with um, 3D glue gel as well. Fiona uses a bit of cling film before I put the cap on. It comes away with a push to plunger. That's really great. Yeah, because that's another way it stops the um, air getting to it, doesn't it? Fabulous tips. I might try that one myself, Fiona. Thank you. So to finish our card, all we need to do is then add our corsages. So whenever you're adding to your design, little pointer, try before you glue. So we're just going to pop them in like so. Just going to see that A, everything's where we want it to be. Everything looks great. If I'm happy with how that's looking, we can take them out and start gluing them into place. So again, taking our cap off our syringe, a little bit of glue gel to the back and we go in with our first layer, just positioning it so you've got little bits just trailing over the edge. Now, so another design feature, don't ever try, well you can, but don't ever worry about trying to get things neatly lined up within edges. It gives you a far more natural look if you have elements of the die cuts trailing over the edge it draws the design together it brings almost like um these layers into harmony they kind of then are captured in the die cut look that you're you're viewing and it all brings it together into one next one a little bit of glue gel to the back and just easing the card away and gently placing that through just checking as we go, that it's not hanging too far over the edge, just in case I do want to post this card at any stage. Add a little bit of glue gel again to the back of this one. So you see each time I add a little bit more because we're going up in height, so we need to add a little bit more gel so it can attach to the base of the card. Gently placing that down and just checking how that's looking. Because we're working with the gel, it gives me a little bit of work time, a little bit of wiggle room just to adjust the flower slightly. So it's a really fun way. It almost looks like you've got kind of a secret behind the top cover to that card. It's kind of exploding out towards the front of the design there. Now I've popped my phone pad somewhere that I can't see. Maybe that will come off. Maybe I can use that. Yes. Yes, that will do. Um, just snip a tiny little foam just to one end like so and then hold that down to stick that corner down as well just so you've got this lovely neat finish that one's not sort of flapping away but it gives you a really pretty edge now if you wanted to if you were for example posting this you can pull this curl round more add a little bit of glue add another foam pad tuck that under and then keep that down but I think actually I quite like it even though it's quite raised um, if I was going to send that in the post, I'd perhaps pack it with a little bit of tissue so it doesn't get damaged uh, into a little um, jiffy bag, for example, or maybe I might even make a box for it too. That is a little look at our perfect day card. Um, so by all means, let me know in the comments whether you're going to be making your own version. Perhaps you've got die sets at home that you want to try this with great way to give new life because it really does look like the flowers are kind of bursting out from the inside of the card there as well and a lovely way to utilize that perfect day card shape by creating a tenfold card too now let me try and turn this around oh there we go okay i managed it so this is the card because sometimes it's difficult to see when you're looking in that way so that's the card in all its glory perhaps you want to mix it up perhaps you want to do something with in more colorful card perhaps you want to do something in a bolder color perhaps you want to do something for a birthday perhaps Think about how you could utilise those steps in your own creations and please, please do pop them up into the Carnation Crafters group because it would be really delightful to see what you guys have been making. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Lavinia. Thank you, Christine. Oh, Lindsay as well. Thanks, guys. That's really kind of you. Oh, thank you. Now, as I said, I could be persuaded to um, possibly give you a sneaky peek of something that might be coming up next week so do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see stuff from around my craft room because i i'm pretty easy to persuade 
Um, so we do, I think, I think the uh, announcement's gone out. I think uh, it probably has by now. We do have a show, another launch, new collection next week. It's launching on Monday, Bank Holiday Monday. Um, and it is, it is just so, so cute. Can you just show how to make the back stand for the card? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what we did was cut a front and a back from the um, outer die set of the Perfect Day card shape. <laughs> it was like, don't be silly, of course I want to see. I'm like, okay, I'll find some samples to show you. Um, sorry, I think it was Sue that asked the question. So yes, so we've cut two, uh, one front, one back, and then we've scored an inch from the top, whichever side we want our fold from red liner tape across the, the top to join the two and that gives us our card blank. So you've got a front of the card and a bespoke back that then stands beautifully. And what have we got? Lavinia, yes, yes please, Teddy, yeah. All right, okay, I'll be persuaded, but if I get into trouble, I'm blaming you guys. So, <laughs> not really, don't worry. Um, so yeah, most, most of the samples have gone off for photography at Create and Craft. Consider yourself persuaded. <laughs> I will consider myself persuaded. Um, I will do a, a proper show preview. So the show launches, uh, Garden Safari launches at half past 10 on Monday the 25th. And I will do a show preview the day beforehand on the Sunday. Uh, you're persuaded it's official. So um, I will go through it in more detail then with the boards and things like that for anyone who, who would like to tune in to see the Garden Safari collection in more detail. But if you want a sneaky peek ahead of uh, what we're releasing on social media and things like that, I've got a couple of things I can show you. So we've got just a gorgeous, gorgeous card shape as well. The vignettes are divine and the little creatures, the little animals, the, the detailing is just so soft, so whimsical and something um, I think a lot of us can relate to. So this is just one of the samples. This is by Claire. Thank you, Claire. So it's one of those, join us and on a garden safari. What will you find at the bottom of the garden? It's almost like a little reveal card, if you like. So we've got the little gate, we've got little creatures, we've got beautiful florals as well. And to the inside, you've got your trellis, you've got your pots. I mean, it's just packed full of detailing, really sweet little things. It's kind of cards that you look at once and you just fall in love with. And then you keep looking and you see even more detail, even more amusement. I mean, the mice are just so cute as well. Um, you'll notice their stamp sentiments. You'll notice there's papers that I can't say too much because I really will get into trouble for doing this. But do you know what? It's it's a really, really pretty collection. If I just show you um, just quickly one more, um, just to give you an idea. I mean, obviously that's, that's a lovely sort of spring bouquet, spring kind of green, moving into that kind of fresh summer vibe as well. Can I reserve my own seat now? I need this, I need, yeah, I know, wow. Lindsay says, wow, Davy says, oh, lovely. Davy says, stop teasing us. <laughs> I'm sorry, I am a bit of a tease, aren't I? Um, I'll show you one more sample before I get a phone call telling me off. Um, oh my gosh, look at his face. Look at the little fox cub, isn't he, or she? just gorgeous again we've kind of got that garden gate vibe going on you've got your wildflowers this one's been made by tina thank you tina um again detailing there so pretty but i'm really i really cannot show you any more at the minute so please 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 do keep tuned to our social pages on facebook our brand page and also carnation crafters of course because um i will pop up more sneaky peas <laughs> <laughs> um loving it yeah Lavinia's loving it Christina thinks it's cute yeah really lovely so um really quickly on that one it's um called Garden Safari and it's one of those that spans generations it spans whoever you know if you want to give this to your husband if you want to give it to your grandpa I know I will be making my grandpa a birthday card out of this collection because he just loves gardening as well so really really key that it just brings in that lovely homely comfy lovely vibes thinking about summer days sitting out in the garden um just enjoying the beautiful um british wildlife that we have as well fiona says i'll not be able to sleep until i get it 
Uh, goodness me. Let's just see. Can't resist from Humberta. Yeah, I know. It's just gorgeous. So yeah, that is that is the next collection. Lindsay's going to be on the naughty step again. Yeah, I will be right there with you, Lindsay. Um, it's it's just a glorious collection. But um, yeah, I will do. I'll do a little live preview like we normally do before the show so you can get a little bit more in depth so if you've got any questions save them up for sunday and um, what i'll do i'll be online um <laughs> Norm, i'm available to carry my bags on monday honestly norma that is something i would probably take someone up on because you should see my poor little car when it goes to the studio with all the soundboards in <laughs> it's chaos um nick's so talented yeah tanya he really is he really is all the team Nick and his design team um, are just fabulous at what they do, what they create, and the love, the care, just everything that they pour into this artwork, these designs, it really does show. And I think that's what you guys really come to love from Carnation Crafts as well. Um, Valerie doesn't think she's going to get off naughty stuff. I just know what I think, just put up put up tents, just just enjoy, just, <laughs> just stake your claim on the naughty step, Valerie. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be doing. Um, right, I'm going to sign off now. What I will do, I'll be around for a little while um, after the live as well. So if you do get any questions, please do type them up. Let me know. Um, next week at some point, it's going to be a really busy week with um, quite a few shows. But we'll we'll still try and get a live in as well. Um, don't plan too many shows as it won't last an hour. <laughs> We have got a few shows on this one, so I might have to get out my tap dancing shoes as well, won't I, Fiona, if we do um, sell out of the stock. But yeah, by all means, um, let me know if there's anything you want to see on uh, the next next week's Facebook Live. We'll try and incorporate if you've got any burning questions, anything you technique-wise want to see. Do let us know. We will try and fit those in for you. And in the meantime, it's been absolutely wonderful to have your company. Please stay safe, and I shall see you next week. Bye!